And um, yeah, it's great to be here, actually in a, in a studio. So it's the uh, first time since a long while. Unfortunately, you all have to connect um, live, but that's, uh, that's a good one. I think we're, we're getting there eventually. So I'm super excited to be part of this uh, micro-segmentation day because segmentation is one of those, uh, I would say, basic you know, security measures that have to be implemented. And we will see how micro-segmentation can actually facilitate that process by disconnecting from the physical um, and our connections of normal network segmentation. So today, as mentioned, I will be talking about the practical benefits of micro-segmentation and, and within how it fits within uh, a strategic cybersecurity program. All right, so we will go through uh, these topics. I will give a quick introduction of uh, ProCISO, um, a, a, new, a newborn company that, uh, that I founded at the beginning of the year, um, micro-segmentation pros and cons, and then use cases of micro-segmentation, practical ones, which hopefully will be beneficial to, to reflect on uh, how this can be done in different environments. And then how micro-segmentation fits in a holistic cybersecurity uh, strategy. Then if there will be time, we will have uh, some questions and answers, hopefully. Otherwise, we can collect them and maybe reply later. We have a panel at the end of the session. We can uh, collect some, uh, some questions. So who am I and why am I even here to speak about micro-segmentation? So I've been a chief information security officer for uh, around 15 years in uh, um, big enterprises, uh, telco typically, but also recently in healthcare. I'm currently, as mentioned, uh, managing director of ProCISO. Um, I have 25 years of experience in IT, networking, DevOps, and um, yeah, in, in digital transformations, uh, I would say uh, complex environments. Uh, I have uh, certifications in information security, cloud security, risk management, business continuity, supply chain security, all things which are, I think, important for the topic we are discussing about. Um, I consider myself a business enabler, uh, meaning I have a very technical background, but I also look into um, how to challenge and how to engage with, uh, with the business or with CEO levels. Um, I like to try and converge with uh, technical requirements, but also normative legal regulatory requirements, which are very, very important for, for organizations as well to, to adhere to or to comply with. Um, I think of myself as a strategic thinker, meaning that I like to see the big picture but then identify those uh, high priority areas of risk in which uh, we can immediately uh, do some quick wins on, but that are still convergent with the overall strategy. So ProCISO, quick introduction, uh, new company. Uh, the ambition is to be a, a strategic uh, advisor uh, for organizations that want to implement uh, their cybersecurity strategy. Uh, define their cybersecurity program, use best practices, international standards, uh, etc. Um, I strive to identify uh, best fit solutions or innovative products which can help the organization that are not just uh, uh, fancy products, but are products which can really help the business because they could be relevant for that specific context. And then uh, supporting and managing these solutions and supporting the customer by doing uh, managed services overall for them. Uh, the methodology, and uh, this I think is interesting beyond just the fact that ProCISO does it, but uh, the fact that um, it's important to understand what the business does. Uh, and based on that, you will identify what are those uh, um, areas, uh, priority processes, which are really fundamental and critical for, for the business. Um, having identified that, then you can look into more details, see what assets, what systems are supporting those processes, and who are um, the stakeholders that are involved, what data is, is being processed, and, and how this should be classified in a way that then you can define what security measures to implement. Assessing risk is, again, super important. Um, baseline typically against the international standards, so we can mention NIST, ISO 27000, PCI DSS, whatever is relevant for that business, and uh, especially doing it not through uh, manual one-off exercises, but implementing it in a way that it can be repeatable in time because this is a never-ending program. It's a never-ending process. Therefore, uh, the use of tools like GRC, IRMs, that allow to uh, identify the scope, identify the assets, and then monitor and manage in time 
um, how the, the threats evolve, how the vulnerabilities uh, are um, evolving uh, again, and then how to um, minimize uh, the, the risks by also planning the remediation actions. The overall objective is to build resilience, meaning this is a very broad term. Uh, it's very hyped recently, but uh, essentially what it should mean is that uh, organizations should be in the condition of uh, being able to respond to, um, to incidents. Therefore, building capabilities for um, um, de protecting, detecting, responding, and rapidly, rapidly recovering from uh, adverse events because they happen and they will happen eventually. Therefore, the overall package is uh, being able to do this consistently. It doesn't happen overnight. Therefore, it will take some time to, to build and, and to implement. So it needs to be done in a sustainable way. That's why I was also referring to building a program which can be repeated in time because um, this is a continuous uh, journey which needs to evolve and uh, continuously improve. So let's jump into the topic of today, micro-segmentation, uh, pros and cons. When we talk about micro-segmentation, um, the big difference uh, against uh, traditional uh, network segmentation is that um, it allows you to see a business context. So you will identify applications which are common, uh, which communicate with each other, which interact, which have interdependencies between each other, and therefore they give you a, a business view of, um, of your environment, disconnecting it from the physical um, devices which are actually supporting it. Uh, this is the first benefit. The second one is uh, visibility. Im immediately as you enable um, one device with a micro segmentation, it's like um, switching on a flashlight. You immediately start seeing who is connecting with that device that, that's been connected with micro segmentation, and you will see flows. Uh, you will identify um, all the relationships that you have with that device. As you add more and more, then the flashlight uh, increases and, and you will have more and more visibility all over the, the overall scope. And connected to this is granularity as well. Um, the host is, is one level, but you will be able to see um, the processes which are interacting with other hosts and with other processes on the, the, the endpoint, the other ends. Therefore, you will have this very deep uh, visibility of what protocols are, are, are running, what um, interactions are happening between systems at a very granular level. Agility and flexibility is uh, another uh, very important benefit of micro-segmentation. It, it gives the um, freedom to plan, and we will see at, at the end of the presentation how this could be set up, to plan how, uh, how to implement it. If you would do this, uh, implement segmentation on, in a traditional way, uh, essentially you would need to maybe uh, swap a device, a switch, configure a VLAN, uh, or introduce a, um, a new firewall, um, do configurations, and this could impact multiple systems at the same time those probably on the same uh, VLAN segment, uh, et cetera. Uh, Micro-segmentation allows you to identify uh, uh, the scope and progressively implement the solution and distribute it on the environment and on the, on the perimeter that you have decided. Therefore, it gives you this um, agility, freedom of, of planning, plus the flexibility of, again, being independent of the physical environment. So we will see, again, one of the use cases later that uh, it will be possible to um, move around your hosts, your devices, in different environments, but not losing the uh, business or application context. That is extremely useful, I would say, especially in our dynamic world in which things keep on changing. And uh, it's one of the biggest benefits of, of micro-segmentation. Then centralized management, again, uh, it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer being able to view uh, with one single pane of glass uh, a map. I think we will see this in the, in, the, um, in the workshops later. There are multiple tracks, one on business and one more on uh, the technical side. You will see definitely the, the dashboard, you will see the console. You will be able to see a map of all the devices, but then you'll be able to drill down into uh, the individual connections and understand uh, who's talking to who, that's easy, but then exactly what protocol is, is being involved and what kind of interaction is happening. Plus, in addition to that, all the information which is collected, all the events which are collected by this uh, console um, will be able to, will become a, a log source 
towards your SOC, towards the same environment, which then you can um, um, correlate with all the other information which comes from the other log sources. Okay, there's a lot of pros. I've mentioned uh, specifically one con. I think this is, um, it's fair to say. Um, again, it's, it's based on software. So micro-segmentation, the biggest difference is based on software. And by the way, it's the biggest advantage as well. But on the other hand, you are still introducing an external component on your devices. Therefore, it needs to be tested. It needs to be verified. Uh, you, you must verify the performance. Of course, it's a very lightweight agent. Um, the, the, the hosts are, um, I mean, it, they can be, as we said, because of the agility and flexibility, this can be done uh, in a progressive way, therefore really verifying that uh, there's no big impact from the fact that you've introduced a so software component uh, on, on the endpoint. Plus, there's opportunity of installing the agent actually on the network interface, therefore disconnecting from the operating system. And, 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 and actually, the software agent, which is very lightweight, as I said, has a low impact on performance, um, works well on legacy environments, uh, virtual envir environments, VDIs, etc. Next is the uh, use cases. So here I will show some practical scenarios in which micro-segmentation can increase you know, the resilience of, of, the, of, the, end, of the organization. And micro-segmentation being the isolation uh, or in being it making the environment independent of the physical infrastructure. So the first use case would be the most typical one, on-premises, okay, maybe not so relevant today, but uh, eventually it, it will become, but still probably in some environments it still is, uh, where you might have um, workstations, uh, desktops, office, meaning uh, yeah, desktop, desktop environments, and, and then server environments, databases, uh, development um, environment, and data centers. Uh, in this case, it's very uh, straightforward to implement, um, probably the most typical environment. And, and micro-segmentation can be, again, implemented uh, very quickly, um, progressively, as more comfortable for who needs to implement it without big disruptions, without having to replace physical equipment, without having to introduce uh, new devices. Greenfield, this is uh, actually very interesting because um, I would say segmentation by design would give a, a good starting point for who is building up a new infrastructure to then be able to have all of those advantages that we just saw before, the, the, the pros, understanding that um, it, it will be f the, the, the infrastructure will be future-proof. It will be very difficult to, to lose track of devices which are connected on the internet, on, uh, on, the, on the network, uh, which are interacting with different applications because this will, full, will be fully managed since day one. This is, I think, a very interesting use case for, um, for these kind of scenarios. ITOT convergence. So uh, there's a need now. There's um, uh, maybe it's uh, a, a bit again of a hype, uh, but ITOT or convergence is happening. It's happening because it's opportunistic, because it's, um, it's beneficial. Um, it's efficient, you can reduce costs. Of course, you are increasing uh, risks by doing that. And um, micro-segmentation can allow to do this by minimizing the risks to uh, very, very low levels while you're completely in control because, as I said, you have, you have a console, you will be able to see exactly what's happening and you will be able to do fine-tuning. Um, as I said, IoT, ITOT, but OT meaning in, meant in a broad sense. Um, meant as a separate um, infrastructure, a separate network compared to the IT network. It could be in the telco world, it could be the, 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 the core telco network. So being able to uh, communicate between these networks but still being able to segregate them properly, here micro-segmentation could be extremely useful. Cloud and hybrid. So compared to traditional segmentation, uh, I would say it's quite complex to have um, segmentation which is distributed between different environments, between on-premises and cloud environments. Micro-segmentation can help, can facilitate this, uh, this process. And again, I really invite you to go look at, uh, at the technical workshops because you will see how you will have devices which are um, uh, distributed across on-prem, um, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, 
and you will only see one application flow. These are, will be seamless. They, uh, it's not, the, the infrastructure which is below is not important for, uh, for micro-segmentation. It will give you a, a clear business view and an application view. Therefore, extremely interesting use case. The other opportunity here, again, connected to agility, flexibility, is the fact that if you are implementing uh, micro-segmentation on-premises, and then you decide to do a migration or to, to move some systems into the cloud, this will be, let's say, transparent, because you will be free to, to move these, the, the, these applications, these, connect, these devices, into the different environments, but they will be still connected to the same application tag, which allows to, um, to do this migration in a very seamless and very quick way and uh, in a very comfortable, planned way that you, you feel completely in control of, of what's happening. Super important when you have an environment where you have consolidated legacy devices systems. It's the best solution would be to dismiss these systems because they're outdated, they're end of life, they cannot be patched. However, um, in some cases, it's not possible. So what do you do? Uh, you would need to try and isolate them as much as possible, um, contain them. But in, in some cases, they still need to communicate with some other devices. Therefore, they, they have to uh, interact with, with other systems. There are these interdependencies. There are users that need to connect to them. Therefore, here again, uh, micro-segmentation supports these environments. Therefore, you, the, the, the device that I said is software-based. Uh, can be installed in um, mainframes, uh, environments which are um, yeah, legacy and, and very difficult to, to install anything on them. Uh, this solution, micro-segmentation, can support here as well. Transformation. Um, this is connected, uh, I would say, in general, because transformation activities are uh, dynamic in nature. Uh, there's um, a lot of uh, moving parts. Um, planning a digital transformation while, again, disconnecting from the physical boundaries, uh, the, the, the physical legacies that, that you have, will e facilitate this process. And it will allow, on one hand, to implement the uh, segmentation uh, in a controlled way, in a controlled environment. And, and two, will, will help the, this convergence. You might have different departments doing it. You might want to, do, want to uh, begin the transformation by addressing multiple areas. Um, the flexibility that segmentation, micro-segmentation provides will facilitate the overall process of a digital transformation. This, again, is, is very, very important. OK, now I like to always consider when I, I have a a requirement, there is a risk to be mitigated. I'd like to understand um, where this risk is, where is it positioned um, in my holistic strategy, and what am I doing, and, and how am I going to mitigate that risk? So uh, identifying then the security measure that I will implement, understand where it will provide the benefit, because then I will be able to measure how uh, I'm progressing within the overall phases of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a very complex um, domain. It's made up of different phases. Um, I'm using the NIST framework because it gives a very easy to understand, very visual under um, representation of what these phases are. NIST uses five um, um, phases, and, and we can go through each of them to see how micro-segmentation provides its benefit. So in the identify phase, this is where you would assess your uh, assets, um, understand uh, the data which is processed, classify it, understand the stakeholders that are involved, um, map the systems and, and uh, see where they are physically located. So this is a, an extremely important task. Many, many companies, many organizations um, don't do this properly or essentially they underestimate it. Uh, this can be kept under control by, as I said before, integrating with the GRC and IRM that you will be able to uh, put together uh, and maintain this information um, in, in a structured way, possibly connecting it with a CMDB. But realistically, what happens is that it's very difficult to keep this information updated. So you might run a, a one-off program. You might have a program, but then it's based on Excel. And 
maintaining it is extremely, um, um, it introduces efforts on multiple stakeholders because you will have multiple people that are experts in their vertical domains uh, needing to provide their information. And therefore, it becomes messy. It becomes, um, it, it, there are human errors. Um, the best would be to implement a structured program, an IRM, a GRC tool for doing that. So how can micro-segmentation support this? As we mentioned before, one of the biggest benefits that micro-segmentation bring is visibility. But visibility, which is not one-off. It's a visibility which is continual. It, it's, it's there. It, you, you will see the flows. You will see everything which is happening continually on your network, on your environment that you have defined. So I've highlight, highlighted here in, in yellow where uh, I believe that micro-segmentation provides an active um, contribution to the overall holistic strategy. If we move over to the protect phase, we will see that and here typically you would have uh, solutions which are uh, firewalls, uh, intrusion prevention systems, which typically uh, prevent um, actions, uh, malicious events from happening, uh, attacks from happening. This is the first, the first layer, then you might have multiple layers. Um, what micro-segmentation can contribute here, again, it's an active benefit that it's bringing, is preventing unauthorized traffic to happen. Therefore, here we can talk uh, or bring the example of a ransomware attack. We will um, ensure that the solution will block any unauthorized tra traffic which will happen, so propagation which happens laterally, and only allow those uh, approved application flows between the, the applications that have been identified and grouped together uh, in that application scope. In the detect phase, here um, the, 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 the phase would be identifying if the protective measures have failed, therefore there's been some sort of compromise. Um, it might be a light compromise, it might be a, a much broader one. However, the quicker you can detect that something has gone wrong, the quicker you will be able to you know, contrast it and, and, and try to, um, to react to it and by lowering the impact that that event can have on, uh, on your enterprise. Here, I've I did not highlight it in yellow because um, there's no real uh, direct uh, benefit coming from micro-segmentation. However, the indirect benefit is that the information which is collected by uh, the platform, and again, I invite you to go and see uh, the, the workshop later on, because it will give um, a practical uh, view of the console, um, the events which are collected, how these can then be fed into a SIM. And this is exactly what we're talking about here. We, we will be able to feed this information, all these events which are happening, be them uh, authorized, allowed, or not allowed, that's up to you to decide. You will be able to feed this information in a SIM, correlated with all the other log sources which are already connected to the SIM, and then be, be being able to detect quicker and maybe even just identify some, um, uh, some weak signals, which are not actually attacks, but there are some activities, could they be reconnaissance, but activities, malicious actions, which are already happening in the environment, be it external and in internal uh, user trying to identify some systems on the network, et cetera, et cetera. Respond is a very important phase of, of cybersecurity. The uh, idea here is that Again, it's highlighted in yellow because micro-segmentation provides an active contribution here. Uh, you will define uh, certain policies, configurations, that will um, have micro-segmentation react to certain events. One of these reactions, um, there are multiple of course, will be to, of course, block traffic. It will be to contain, but it would, could be also to isolate a device from the network itself, removing it completely. And this is typically one of the response actions that you would have in case of a compromise. Identify that there's a system which is behaving strangely and you haven't identified yet why it's behaving strangely. You might want to, again, might not, but it, it depends on, on, on each situation is, is different, but you might come to a point in which you will need to isolate uh, that device because you feel that it's been heavily compromised and therefore you will need to do additional actions on it. 
The last phase is the recover phase. Um, again, here I believe that microsegmentation can provide an uh, indirect uh, benefit, which is related to the fact that uh, it will provide very detailed uh, visibility of what events have happened, and also the chronological order in which these uh, events have happened. What were the interactions between the systems, between the applications, uh, before there was a compromise? It might even be not directly connected to the incident itself, uh, but it could help to identify some weaknesses that were present in the environment, in the network, in the systems, and plan for what recovery helps for also is identify the root cause. The root cause will then um, give you some lessons learned, will uh, help you understand um, where these weaknesses were, and then plan for continual improvement. And this will feed again into the identify phase, in which you will say, wow, I thought I had this situation under control. I thought I had effective security measures in place. This actually wasn't the case because I had a compromise. Therefore, I need to do something about it. So micro-segmentation will give a lot of additional details of what, has ha what had happened on the network between hosts, between applications, before there was uh, um, that negative uh, event, before there was that compromise. And this is a wrap of the holistic strategy. So holistic, holistic, if you want to have a cybersecurity strategy which you can consider as holistic, you need to cover all of these five phases. Um, can you do them all at the same time? Uh, you could. Uh, it depends on your budget, depends on the resources you have. Would you want to build them all up in parallel or would you want to build up some before and then come to the others? Okay, essentially, you need to build them all up. But then your strategy would be, depending on what your business is doing and what your priorities are, and that you identify in the top-down uh, analysis that I was mentioning before, identify what your strategy for implementing the NIST framework should be like. You want to in interact with, um, with systems, you want to do them uh, uh, in parallel, etc. The last um, practical implementation here would be, okay, love it, how do I do it? Um, again, micro-segmentation facilitates this process because um, the first step would be identify a small scope. A few AM systems, a few hosts, implement the agent on that and switch it on. Monitor what's happening without enforcing. Therefore, you will see, the, as I mentioned before, the flashlight providing light in the whole environment. You will see uh, flows between uh, applications. You will see things that you never even imagined of, most probably. Uh, and then all of this information you can feed into a SOC. And you will be able to correlate with other events coming from other uh, log sources. And you will immediately have this visibility, uh, which is required to understand what's going on. At a certain point, you'll say, I'm comfortable. I can switch to enforcement mode. And therefore, from that moment onwards, you will be blocking any um, uh, traffic which isn't properly approved. Next step, extend the scope. You can do this progressively. You can start small. You can see what happens. You can switch on, enable, see again the reaction, what would be any, any negative things, roll back, and then progressively extend the scope, which can be the single scope you've identified or adding a new application scope. I think this um, wraps up the, the overall presentation. Again, thank you for, uh, for watching. And uh, Hils, yeah? Hi. Hi, Mario. Thanks for your excellent presentation. Thank you. So we got a few questions for the audience. I would like to uh, uh, start sure. with the one from, uh, from Haida. Uh, you mentioned that uh, a lot of teams need to be involved to make this a success. So if you are not organized properly in your organization, what advice could you give the audience uh, where to start from an organizational perspective? Who are the must-have within that, uh, I would say, multidisciplinary organization or structure or project team? Yeah, so this is a very good question because typically uh, what would happen uh, is that um, IT uh, you know, departments would take the lead and say, it's a technical pro topic, mm -hmm. we have to implement it, we're going to segment networks, this is how we do it, and, but then it might not actually be practical for the, the, the overall organization. So what micro-segmentation allows you to do indeed is um, distribute uh, the, the, the overhead 
mm -hmm. and the responsibility also of classifying certain flows you know, between the applications. So that will allow you to interact in a dynamic way mm -hmm. with full involvement of all the stakeholders, which are the application stakeholders. So uh, extending this discussion to the rest of the company, which is actually the, the right way, the right approach. Right? Yeah. And, and how do you see the role of security? Because uh, I mentioned a couple of times, and I think you did as well, security is typically perceived as the department of no. So what role do you see them play uh, in that whole uh, structure? Again, um, no, the, good question. And uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, uh, Mr. No, but security should be the enabler of the business. Mm -hmm. It's that um, solution, it's that um, uh, glue, which allows the business ideas to actually come to light mm -hmm. in a way that they can be sustainable. We can think about home banking. Yep. Would we ever imagine that we would expose a bank to the internet some time ago? Probably one would say, these guys <laughs> are crazy. Yeah. But it happened and, and uh, okay, um, we might see some hacks uh, now and then, but essentially uh, security should facilitate the business to enable you know, their, uh, their business ideas and do it in a secure way. Yep. Okay, so uh, you, you uh, touch on the topic uh, OT and IT. It is a becoming a reality. Um, so, but the IT of the OT organizations are uh, typically run by manufacturing owners mm -hmm. that are doing it the old traditional ways. So how can we persuade them to, to think about uh, micro segmentation in general? Yeah, again, uh, this is a, a great opportunity for those environments in which it's uh, very complex and we talked about legacy, but we can yeah. also talk about you know, very uh, specific, uh, specialized uh, solutions which uh, definitely can open up a bit more. Uh, again, we were talking about air gap systems some time mm -hmm. ago, but then uh, what happens is, and we, we've seen some incidents, recent incidents uh, in the US, uh, uh, water companies you know, that have- Oil system, pipelines. Oil pipeline. Yep. And at the end of the day, why do these things happen? Because it's convenient, because it's necessary to have this sort of convergence. So it's a great idea that um, who produces uh, those solutions can actually think a bit ahead and again, expose a bit to risks, but then be able to understand them and to contain them, to make things sustainable in a way that they can actually be implemented in today's environments, which require this, require, you cannot have any more dedicated teams for physical systems, mm -hmm. right? Only in very, very specific, I would say extremely high risk environments, this yep. is a, a, a true necessity. Yep. Yeah, so uh, at least from your story, uh, my takeaway is that with micro segmentation, especially uh, with the, the way you suggested, you get a lot more information about the application flows. Yeah. And that will should be at least the starting position of all discussions. Yeah, that's uh, and uh, they, it's essentially the discovery phase. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're talking about a context in which you know, you're introducing it, um, you're introducing it progressively. You know, if you start greenfield, of course, mm -hmm. you, uh, you will have a huge advantage that you actually build up by design the micro segmentation. But if you need to introduce it, then the uh, the, the extremely valuable benefit is the discovery. Okay. Right? So you yep. will immediately see these flows and you will be able to then uh, sit down together with the application managers, the responsible for that business process, to understand, okay, these applications are doing these things, is it okay, you know, yeah. should we should we review it? And then you maintain that in time. As new systems and new applications are being delivered, you will have your application manager that can then identify what the standard flows should be. And yeah. this is the normal way of doing things. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions for the audience, please use the platform. Um, we will pick Mario, up. again, thank you very thank much you. for your excellent pleasure. presentation.